Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 12.5, Law of Cosines. And before we get into the Law of Cosines, I first want to reiterate this triangle. Remember, this side C is always across from angle C. And this side A is always across from angle A. And the same with, same with side B and angle B. Now, for the Law of Cosines, we use the Law of Cosines when we have two sides and an angle that does not belong to the sides or we can use it when we have all three sides to figure out our triangle. Remember the law of sines is used when we are given an angle and that same side and then a different side or a different angle. But the law of cosines now when we look at one we first have two sides and then an angle in between. This angle does not belong to any of those sides, so we get to use the law of cosines. Now we first have to look at what we have. When we have an angle, when we're given an angle, this angle C, right, I'm going to use the trig function, or the law of cosines actually, that has the cosine of that angle I'm looking for. So since I have 73 and that is my angle C, I'm going to use this law of cosine. I'm going to use where it's cosine C. And so now we can plug things in to this guy. So it's going to be C squared equals, and now my A is going to be 7, so it's 7 squared plus, and what's B squared? My 10 is B, so I'm going to label that B, and then I'm going to go 10 squared minus 2 times my A again was 7, and my B again was 10 times cosine of 73. Now I'm going to punch some of this stuff in my calculator, so I have C squared, that's going to equal 49 plus 100 minus, when you punch this all into your calculator, you get 40.93. Simplifying all that, we have C squared equals 108.1. How do you solve for a square root, or a square, you square root both sides, so I square root here, I square root there to get C equals 10.4. So now this C right here, this side is 10.4. Now notice that I have an angle across from a side or a side across from an angle that are the same. So what do I have to use? Now you could use law of cosines again, but I think I feel that law of sines is a little bit easier to use. So since I have this side across from that angle, I'm going to use law of sines. So I'm going to set that up as sine of 73, that's going to go over 10.4. That's going to equal. Now I'm going to figure out this angle, so I'm going to use that 7. So it's sine of A over 7. Now ladies and gentlemen, you did not have to use this angle. We could have went with B, but we chose, or I chose to do angle A. So let's keep going with this. Punch that into your calculator. We get point nine five six three over ten point four that equals sine a over seven we cross multiply to get six point six nine four one equals ten point four sine a we divide by ten point four to get point six Four, three, seven. that's going to equal sine A. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how do we get rid of sine A? We have to take the inverse of both sides. So I'm going to take the inverse of that sine A, and then what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So now we have A all by itself, and that's going to equal the inverse of 0.6437, which is 40.1. And that angle is a degree measure. So angle A is 40.1. So now we have 40.1 for that angle. Now for this angle B, what do we have to do? 
Well, for angle B, how many degrees are in a triangle? We can go 180 minus 73 minus 40.1 to come up with 66.9 degrees for angle B. Could have you used law of sines in? Absolutely, but I just like using the degree measure because it's a quick couple buttons in my calculator to come up with the answer. So let's take a look at another one. Now with number two, we are given all three sides. So do we have to use the law of cosines or the law of sines? Well, with the law of sines, we need an angle. We do not have one angle in this triangle, so we have to use the law of cosines. And how do we do that? Well, I can pick any law that I want. It just depends what angle I'm going to solve for. And here I'm just going to pick the first letter in the alphabet. I'm going to pick this angle to solve for first. So which one of these do I need to pick? I need to pick the one that has the cosine of angle A. So now I'm going to plug everything in there. Please remember, ladies and gentlemen, that the side across is A, this is B, and this is C. Here we go. We have 9 squared. That equals 7 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times our B again was 7, and our C was 12 times cosine. We do not know what angle A is. Also a little hint here, ladies and gentlemen, these two numbers right here will be the same as these two numbers right there. We keep going. 81 equals 49 plus 144 minus 168 cosine A. We simplify careful here, ladies and gentlemen, because it's 81 equals, now you add these two together. This 168 is being multiplied to the cosine A. Add these two together first. So it's 193 minus 168 times cosine A. A. Subtract the 193 over because that's attached through multiplication. We cannot touch that. So now it's negative 1, 1, 2 equals negative 168 cosine A. We divide by that negative 168 to get 2 thirds equals cosine A. How do we get rid of that cosine? We have to inverse both sides. So I'm going to take cosine to the negative first here. And I also take this guy to the negative first. So when I do, I get A all by itself, and that's going to be 48 degrees. So this angle here is 48 degrees. I'm going to move on to the next page for some more room. Here we go. Here is our triangle. We already found angle A. So we have angle A, and we have side A, so when we have an angle and a side across from it, let's go ahead and use the law of sines. So we use the law of sines. I'm going to use this guy right here because we have sine of 48 and the side across from that is 9 equals, now you could pick B or C, but I'm going to pick uh, angle B because we know that side B is 7, so it's going to be sine B over 7. Punch sine 48 in your calculator. We come up with 0.7431. That goes over 9. That equals sine B over 7. We cross multiply. 7 times there is 5.202 equals 9 times sine B. Divide by 9. We come up with 0.578 equals sine B. Now how do we get the B all by itself? We have to inverse both sides. So I'm going to take that and sine to the inverse and inverse it here. So now we come up with angle B all by itself and it's going to be 35 degrees. So this angle is 35 degrees. Now if we have this angle 
and we have this angle, how can we find angle C? Well, we just go ahead and use 180. 180 minus 48 from angle A minus 35 from angle B to find that angle C is 97 degrees. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you could have found C before you found B, and we should come up with the same answer, and then you would be able to find B from doing the same exact thing. Again, you would not have to use 180 minus your angles. You could use the law of sines or the law of cosines. Just have to be careful which one you do use. But, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for section 12.5, law of cosines. Good day.